Hey everyone, it's Jenna. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are going to head off to the silos at Waco, Texas. We were in town for a wedding and we figured why not extend our trip an extra day and cross off a bucket list place. So I'm excited to take you all with us and we're going to go through the showrooms and talk about some styling tips and decorating ideas. And we're just going to show you what we saw and experienced. So I hope if you're planning a trip to the silos, you can kind of use this video as a guide or if you're just curious about what's in store at the silos, get it? Because they store things. No, no, okay, it's fine. <laughs> Let's just go to Waco. Let's go. All right, so off we go to Waco, and we were staying in Lago Vista, Texas, which was about an hour and 45 minute drive or so. So, our first stop was breakfast at Magnolia Table, and Magnolia Table is about a seven minute drive from the silos. So, it's not actually on the grounds, but definitely worth a stop, in my opinion. And the aesthetic of this place is absolutely incredible. It's actually an official historical landmark in the state of Texas. The original restaurant that stood here was founded in 1919 by Greek immigrants and I love the Spanish colonial style of the building and how they accented it with all these gorgeous olive trees and bushes all over the property. I also loved the outdoor seating area off to the side of the building where you can grab coffee while you're waiting for a table if the wait is really long and we also spotted Chip and Joanna's handprints in the cement over by the takeaway sign so obviously Mike had to compare hand sizes with Chip. But once we were inside I was surprised to be seated right away we did have reservations for 9 30 a.m on a wednesday and the restaurant didn't really seem to be too crowded so we were brought to the back room of the restaurant and we got one of these really nice tables right by the window the aesthetic of this room was so cute and i love the statement that the tile floor made as well as these gorgeous white exposed ceilings with contrasting black accents and as pretty as the restaurant was my favorite part was definitely the food we went a little crazy and ordered the lemon lavender donut holes to share and then i I also got a lavender iced coffee with oat milk and it was so delicious. We also decided to just go for it and order a juice flight, which was really fun because they have a great selection of juices here. And this was just a fun way to be able to try the ones that sounded good to us. Mike ordered a breakfast taco as well as the French toast and bacon that came with this yummy strawberry butter. And I ordered the farm breakfast that came with their signature hash browns, eggs, peppered bacon, and a flaky buttery biscuit and strawberry butter. It was phenomenal. Once we were done eating, they have a little store attached to the takeaway counter where I got another lavender iced coffee to go and checked out some of their fun souvenir merchandise. I love this little recipe card stand and berry holder. Super cute. Just some fun things that you could maybe take home as a little gift or souvenir to remember your trip by. And next, it was time to head on over to the silos. And just a little tip, there were parking lots all over the place charging money to park. But if you go to the intersection of 6th Street and Jackson Avenue. There is a free dirt lot that you can park in right by the railroad tracks. From what I understand, this lot used to be a lot bigger, but they're doing construction in majority of where it was, but there's still some free spots to park if it's not crowded the day you go. So here we are at the silos and we walked into the more newly renovated side. This whole area is just so charming, but the first spot we decided to go was Magnolia Home because this was the spot I was the most excited to see. And the concept for Magnolia Home is more of a showroom style where you can get a broader picture of room layouts and how to piece furniture together from her Magnolia home line. And we walked in and I love how the rooms are just separated so you can really get a great feel for the design intentions and styling of each space. And most of these furniture and decor pieces are available online and they had a bunch of employees there dedicated to helping you ship them to your home if you aren't local. Each room has a little identification card with the name of the piece as well as the price. And I will say since this is a designer collection they tend to be slightly pricier but i really enjoy just walking around this space and getting inspiration and some of the decor pieces were actually pretty reasonable i really love this dining table setup with the runner down the middle candlesticks with the varying heights and just the simple small touches of greenery spaced along the runner i also love the sweet little scallop chargers topped with a single sprig of greenery i think that's just such a thoughtful detail this extended kitchen island is so gorgeous for 
for a pop of contrast, maybe in a larger kitchen where you need to add some more storage or counter space. I also loved this bedroom setup. I was immediately drawn to the gorgeous Ficus Audrey. I talked about this in my last trends video and how I'm seeing so many designers use this tree right now. And I love the sense of scale and height that it adds to this room and is just such a gorgeous accent piece. Definitely makes me want a big old Ficus Audrey of my own, even though we all know I'd probably kill it. There was also another one accenting this gorgeous dining space. I loved the black rimmed plates and how they just used a couple of large statement vases for a centerpiece. Definitely not super practical if you're having a big dinner party where people need to see each other over the table, but it's just such a gorgeous look for everyday styling, especially if it's a more formal dining table that you don't use regularly. The scale of those big statement vases is just really nice on a big table. And the trees in here were honestly so breathtaking with how big they were. And you guys know that I'm olive tree obsessed, so I just took a minute to appreciate these ones in here as well. I also just loved the view out these windows and how they framed the rest of the silo grounds with all the natural light streaming in. And next I went over to the decor section and spotted the statement bases that were used in the centerpiece. And honestly, they surprisingly weren't too expensive, which was a nice discovery. If only I had room in my suitcase for a big old statement vase, but honestly, I wouldn't put it past me. I did travel back from Arizona one time with a vintage stool as my carry-on. So yeah, anyway, I loved seeing the local art that they had for sale. They sold a lot of artwork from the artist Shayna Page, who is a local Texas artist, and she features lots of really pretty Texas landscapes in her work. And I believe that these were all signed originals, which is pretty cool. She has some really beautiful pieces that match the Magnolia home vibe really well. I also spotted this Gerard accent chair that looks almost identical to the one I bought from HomeGoods several months ago. However, this one was over $1,000 and I did buy mine for $3.99, so definitely got a steal on that. I also noticed that in this space, they put two coffee tables together side by side because of the larger scale of this space. And this is something that I'm seeing designers do more often lately. I don't know though, what do you guys think of this look? Are you into the double coffee tables or would you just prefer getting the one larger coffee table? Let me know in the comments. I also loved this little rusty greenhouse moment and how older vintage pieces are used as displays in this showroom. I think that it really helps give things a more homey feel. And I also loved these little stools with the faux aged detail in the wood. I also thought 50 bucks for them was a great price considering that similar vintage ones can go for over $100. So definitely a fun little find there. They also had some great pieces for entertaining. I loved this gorgeous vintage dining table that everything was laid out and displayed on. I just really adore all the character and detail that worn wood adds to a space. And I found these cute little marble name card holders for play settings, but you could also use this to hold a recipe card or maybe to display a cute photo on a desk, something like that. I was also loving these leather napkin rings. I like the stitching detail on them and thought that they were so sweet and can go with any season. After leaving the showroom, we headed on over to Magnolia Press, which is the big coffee shop here at the silos. And it's actually attached to the showroom, which was really fun so you could just walk in. And I loved seeing the cozy green color, which is actually, fun fact, called 1905 green. And how the orange chairs really contrast against it. The vibe in here is just super cozy and I love all of the dark green with warm cognac accents. Next, we just took a little stroll around the grounds and I love love how they incorporated details to just encourage people to gather, play, and have conversations with one another. They had things like photo booths, games, and lots of comfy seating everywhere for people to just grab a bite to eat and enjoy each other's company. Another thing that I wanted to check out here was the old church. And this was actually an abandoned church that Joanna just fell in love with and then purchased. They ended up moving it to the grounds at the silos and they had to reframe the structure, but most of the siding, flooring, beams, and pews were all original. So they feature the renovation in one of their Fixer Upper episodes that I recently watched, and it was just fun to come in and experience the finished product. I also enjoyed looking at the floors because in the episode, Joanna really wants to make them dark and Chip wanted to make them lighter. So sorry, Chip. I think Joanna was right on this 
one. I love how the dark floors really allow the ceiling and beam work to stand out. So right next to the church were the shops at the silos and there are six shops total, but the first one we went into was the number 16 shop. And this is Chip's favorite number. So this is kind of like his shop and it has lots of things in it that men would like, which I think Mike really appreciated. But I totally loved the rustic vibe with the antlers and the wood ceilings. Definitely a very warm and cozy and manly look in here. I loved seeing all of the fun coffee table books. They had some nice leather goods in here like this fun silo souvenir baseball. They also had some cool wallets and this don't let the fear of striking out keep you from playing the game sign. This totally reminds me of the movie A Cinderella Story with Hilary Duff, one of my all-time favorites. They also had some really cute hats here. They were a little bit on the pricier side but definitely some fun things in this store. We also just quickly strolled through the rest of the shops like this bath and beauty one that had lots of gorgeous soaps and self-care products. There was also Chapter One, which was a bookstore that had lots of cozy paper goods and a woman's clothing store that boasts well-made evergreen pieces, as well as Tried and True, which featured timeless accessories that never go out of style. Next, we headed on over to the silos to get a closer look at the rusty patinaed landmark themselves. The silos were completed in 1950 and they stand 120 feet tall. They actually withstood an F5 tornado that hit the town three years after they were built in 1953, and they've remained in their current condition ever since. So they're rumored to be the next renovation for Chip and Joe, so it'll definitely be fun to see if and when they turn them into anything, but I love how they incorporated the original structure into their design of the space by adding greenery and flowers just to make everything look really intentional. So right next to the silos was Magnolia Market, where we saw this cute little guest book just sitting on a table outside so obviously we had to sign it and the book was super full so it was kind of hard to find a little piece of space but I did find one and I thank them for all of their inspiration over the years. I definitely wonder though how many guest books they go through and how often they have to replace it. So once inside Magnolia Market, we walked into this super gorgeous paper flower display and I'm pretty sure Mike was holding his breath the entire time hoping I wouldn't buy the whole store, but it was just really fun to see everything all styled with the displays. And for those of you unfamiliar, Magnolia Market is more of the home decor and accessories store. So obviously I had so much fun in here looking at all the home styling pieces. The store was just set up so beautifully with more rustic antique accents and I absolutely loved these aged vases. The small ones were only $18 and the larger ones were $30. So I thought that was a pretty good deal and I love that they look like the old vintage vases that go for so much more on designer websites. They also had some really pretty terracotta pieces as well like this little planter. I love the slightly aged effect it had and I really loved these knots as well. They would definitely add some visual interest to a stack of books or shelf styling and I also loved these little marble bowls. This would be so pretty in a bathroom to hold some soap or maybe in an entryway to hold keys or you know whatever you need to set down. Super pretty and I love the organic marble material. And lastly we couldn't leave the silos without seeing the gorgeous gardens. This is such a relaxing little area with planter beds that make such a beautiful scene coupled with the backdrop of the silos. I love the whimsical look of the twisted twigs that were over the beds and there was so much attention to detail detail in here and everything was so well manicured and taken care of. Here there are spots to sit on a nice day just to relax and enjoy the garden and over tucked away in the corner they have a little greenhouse that is just so precious and cute. It's perfect for snapping a picture and it just really adds to the ambiance of this place. It was nice to just walk through and enjoy the rustic look of all the potted greenery. And right next to the greenhouse they have the little seed and supply store that was originally extra storage for the Magnolia Market, but they moved it to the silos grounds. And when we walked in the shop, I was obsessed with these herringbone brick floors. Here they just sell the cutest little gardening accessories. And I loved the charm of this building with the gorgeous wood paneling and the skylights. And on the way out, we passed the famous Silos Baking Co. You all saw how much we ate for breakfast. So we decided to skip this one, especially because it had a really long line, but I'm definitely looking forward to getting to try it next time. 
All right, everyone, that about wraps up this video. I hope that you enjoyed coming along on our little Waco trip. Definitely give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful or you enjoyed watching it. It really does help my channel. I wanna thank you all so, so much for watching and I will see you all in my next video. Bye.